My name is Kristen Voss. I am Métis. I was born, adopted, and raised here in Takaranto, but my homelands are in Northern Alberta in Treaty 8 territory. I'm also an assistant professor at the University of Toronto Mississauga, where I teach in the Historical Studies Department, as well as at the Women and Gender Studies Institute downtown. Environmental justice reshapes our relationship with the natural world because it shifts our focus from viewing our environment as a resource and as something that can and should be drilled, mined, or fracked into a living relation that we have responsibilities to. Our environment, our waters, lands, and air should have rights and responsibilities to their being and their care. Their rights should be as strong as the corporations involved in environmental destruction. What we can notice in the prints about Edo society and their approach to environmental justice is that it looks a lot like an anti-imperial struggle we can see that the earthquake was understood as a natural phenomenon that sought to rebalance their society, the government's corruption or mismanagement or an increasing gap between the rich and the poor. Though this earthquake wasn't man-made as climate change is today, turning our attention to the responsibility of the government in power is important during natural phenomena in the past or catastrophic climate change today. As we see in this print, damage of disaster, this print has the same role as news media today, as the image shows a realistic pictorial representation of the disaster, and the text in the background lists affected areas and the number of collapsed storehouses. It also announces the location of the five aid centers established by the government to help the affected people. So as these prints were artisan made and circulated within community, this looks a lot like mutual aid. I think about the relationship between data, pollution, and colonialism. I co-lead a lab, the Environmental Data Justice Lab, which is housed in the Technoscience Research Unit, which is an Indigenous-led lab where I'm also the co-director. And we are researching the history, operations, and pollution activities of the Imperial Oil Refinery in Canada's Chemical Valley. Our research asks, how can we imagine or rather, how can we reimagine pollution data? So right now, pollution data in Canada, how it's collected, how regulations are made and enforced, are very much led by industry or the polluters themselves. Our research considers what pollution data and by extension polluting practices might look like if we began with accountability to the land, not as a resource, but as a relation. We ask questions like, what if industry and the government proactively learned about and followed Indigenous communities, in this case Anishinaabe values, in the collection, curation, and response to pollution? And what if the purpose of pollution data was not to meet or hide from regulations and consequences of those emissions, but to create and preserve a healthy environment for seven generations in the future? I think the fight for environmental justice is part of the mending and healing process, but that we can't mend or heal while our lands and communities are still being impacted by environmental violence through extractive industries. What I do notice is that like environmental violence itself, the fight and any subsequent healing is going to be intergenerational. So it will continue. Environmental justice is an anti-colonial struggle. We know that climate change is a direct result of slavery, colonialism, the genocide of indigenous peoples and capitalism. Now as ever, violence on the land is also violence on our bodies. I love to come back to and assign the Red Nations, the Red Deal, indigenous action to save our earth, which premises Indigenous peoples are sovereignty, autonomy, and dignity, but is also a call to action for all people to do three things. First, we need to divest from and abolish prisons, police, and all forms of carcerality. 
Next, we need to heal our bodies by reinvesting in our common humanity. This includes ensuring equitable rights and access to sustainable housing, education, healthcare, public transportation, and infrastructure, as well as food, clean water, land, and air. Finally, environmental justice needs to focus on healing our planet by reinvesting in our common future. This looks like clean, sustainable energy, traditional and sustainable agriculture, land, water, air, and animal restoration, the protection and restoration of sacred sites. And in countries like Canada, it also means the enforcement of treaty rights and other agreements.